Hello and welcome to this Techarati interview series ahead of DevOps Live on the 8th and 9th of March at Excel London. I'm Stuart Crowley, Close to Still Media's Global Content Manager and Editor of Techarati. Today, my guest is Ricardo Morera. He is the Principal DevOps Manager at Vodafone, and he will join a panel at DevOps Live on achieving diversity and sharing his experience at Vodafone. So welcome, Ricardo. Thank you very much, Stuart. It's my pleasure to be here. What do you feel is potentially a challenge for business leaders that might not know much about DevOps, and uh, but they're looking to adopt it or enhance a DevOps culture? What might be a challenge to adopting that? Probably the first part of it would be the misconception that sometimes people have around the DevOps. What is the DevOps philosophy? Mm. Uh, people have... A, a tendency to think about DevOps as just automation, but DevOps is much more than that. The other one would be about the top down. So how the top level management perceives DevOps as an all, and how much they are willing to break the barriers or the silos inside of their own organization, because DevOps is kind of breaking the silos and make the, the cycle of development be faster and the time to market to be faster with quality. Without breaking those silos, we cannot achieve a proper DevOps. Would you say uh, is is the key to that success? Um, is it greater education? Is it um, refining skills and ups upskilling people? What what would you say is the key to that? The key to that would be more about not the skills, but would be more about the soft skills and understanding about the DevOps, where the DevOps is coming and what will enable. Uh, if you embrace DevOps. Many times people talk about DevOps, but they really don't understand that could enable you in several areas that you've been struggling so badly and DevOps could be the answer. Even if on the first approach, like, seems strange because you're breaking completely the, the standard of approach of having, let's say, dev in one side, operation on the other side, security in another side, and then quality in a different side, and then you have the project manager in a completely side and all about DevOps is putting everyone in the same bucket, shift left as much as you can, close the loop with your customers, not maintaining the customers. Okay, when we are ready, we're going to show you. No, as soon as you get ready, you need to go to the customers. These kind of the things you need to give you, to give visibility for the people that are really willing to change. Each project or each company has their own challenges. So we need to be flexible and we need to learn how to readapt ourselves. That's part of the DevOps and Agile concept not being straightly coupled with the old school of being the, the waterfall deliverables or the old school of being on silos. What are the day-to-day the -day responsibilities or the things that you do day-to-day -day as the principal DevOps manager? What, what, what does your day consist of? So first of all, I don't believe in such of a word DevOps manager. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start from that point. And then the next point is if you're managing technical teams, you need to have a kind of a hybrid approach, a hands-on approach and managing teams approach. If you are 100% managing, you will never understand what is the really culture about the technical, what the people that are on the field really implementing, what are their blockers, what, what you can improve, especially with the technologies nowadays, you, every day comes a new tool, a new approach, so you need to keep up to the speed. So if you're only on the management side, you're never going to get that. On the other hand, if you are 100% hands-on, you're never going to manage the team because that is something that I like most is to coach and mentoring. So the people that I have with me, I like to see them grow. So that would be my conception about a manager, but on the technical side, avoiding the world of DevOps. Obviously on the DevOps life cycle, we have things like the development and operation side, but still avoiding the silos because in the end of the day we need to be just one team not different teams we are part of a, a multi-skill team yes with multiple projects but in the end of the day we need to work as a unit not as a silo isolated not even as a manager per se you cannot be isolated oh i'm a manager i'm a different world you are on a di no no we are on horizontal i'm just part of the team but with a let's say a different a little bit different role from the, the reminders shifting shifting left what does that mean and how does that help you become one team 
if you have everyone on the left, if there is a problem in between, I'm not asking, oh, who can help me? No, the team will be uh, immediately, they will be around you, surrounding you in helping and supporting in any issues that you can find in your projects. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be on the left? On the left is the beginning of the design of the project. Mm -hmm. So the principle of the designing since the beginning, so that will be the, the starting point. Uh, and avoiding from that starting point of, okay, let's have everything in detail and then let's deploy. No, we are all together on that origin point. That's what we call left. Doing the first designs, understanding, okay, we all together agree where we want to go, what we want to achieve, and let's not lose any time. Let's deploy into production, but everyone on the same boat, which means security are aware, quality is aware, operation is aware, everyone is aware of what is happening. While the previous model, you have the, the beginning that it takes a long time to everyone to have a detailed plan. And then just later on, they start to think, oh, let's bring security, let's bring these. No, that takes longer to, to reach to the market, anything that you are implementing. So what does diversity mean to you and why is diversity important? Well, if we all have the same background, the same experience, let's say if in a room you have 10 people that have exactly the same background, exactly the same experience, I don't think they're going to, um, let's say, say have different ideas, they're going to have more or less the same ideas. But if you have in the same room 10 people that are completely different from experience, background, whatever, because what makes us as an individual is our experience and all of us, we have different experience. So as much people who have a approach from different uh, spectrum of experience, more value will add to the team. If they work together for the same problem, we're going to have different solutions. If it is a clone of me five times, we're going to say just one thing. Oh, I just know this solution. I don't know nothing else. But if I have me and four other people with different experience, different skills, we, in the end, we're going to have a more, let's say, mature solution or a mature outcome. What sort of skill sets or personalities do you look for? First of all, I'm looking for the soft skills. And that's really important before I even go to the technical skills. So part of what I'm looking is people that are relentless and passionate about the work. So if you are not passionate about the work of DevOps, you're probably not going to like the DevOps. Mm. Um, you need to be a person that is willing to learn, especially with so many technologies and tools appearing every day. So the rhythm of learning the pace, you need to keep uh, following the pace of the, the technology, the IT. It's not the same as I'm developing in a given language. I'm not going to mention any language because I know that there are different themes of this one is better. I'm not, I don't want to go there, but <laughs> I'm a developer in a given language. I can stay there forever. Even the language evolves, but doesn't evolve as much. Mm. What on the DevOps with the tools that we have available, for instance, doing the, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about infrastructure as a code, CI, CD tools, the, the monitoring. We need to keep the pace. So we really need to be passionate about what we are doing and passion about to be an enabler. That would be the soft skills. Person that is ready for challenge. The fundamental here is having the right skills in place, like teamwork, willing to learn, open-minded, be resilient, and be passionate about, about this. That mm. is the main ones. And then obviously the other ones, it's more or less, for instance, if I need someone really an expert in a given technology, obviously I'm going to look someone with the soft skills and that technical skill. But overall, for me, most important, having just the right mindset and the right attitude, you can achieve anything, just mm. having the right mindset. How, how did you get into DevOps? And how, how, how about some other team members that you'll have on the panel as well? How, how did they get into DevOps? Well, <laughs> uh, I used to be a developer and then all of a sudden one day uh, my line manager back then come to me ricardo we need to establish a support line for the product that we just did and i asked do we have a sporting no uh, do we have a deployment plan no this was 10 or 11 years ago more or less then we kind of start to to think about the automation the pipelines and having in place observability 
the tools of CI CD. And then when I realized myself, I was building a DevOps team per se. Back then, I don't remember calling them DevOps team, but later on, okay, this is a DevOps. And then I start to specialize myself building DevOps team. So that was my, my entry world. Nowadays, some of the members of my team, they already come out in you, from the uni having the concept about what is DevOps. So I really want to go to DevOps. While <laughs> others just, ah, well, I was curious and um, well, I prefer more to be on the side of the spectrum of DevOps rather just to focus in one, let's say, in one discipline. But again, DevOps is development as well, by the, by the way. So it's the end to end and having the multi skills. Yeah. Uh, there is no such thing about, um, uh, let's say, not a full stack developer, I want to say, but nobody could say he's an expert end to end. That doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. If you want to be an expert, you really need to focus in one given technology. But you can know a little bit about everything. And knowing a little bit of, of everything enables you to grow even faster and to be a very important piece on any team. So as much as you know, even if you are an expert in a given technology, if you are able to help in other disciplines mm -hmm. that gives value to the team and and the team can pro proceed and progress faster in the delivery with quality in the end if the customer is happy we are happy everybody is happy and having fun working having fun that is another thing that is really important with me if we are here doing what we like more most that's why we are here so let's have fun in the process why not you mentioned about building knowledge and staying on, I guess, staying on top of current trends and also being knowledgeable of potential trends in the future. How do you do that? Do you read a lot? Do you look at news? Do you stay on LinkedIn and look at conversations? How do you stay up on these trends? I come from the culture back in the 90s that was all about sharing the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Everybody's willing to share to um, that, that community of sharing. Uh, nothing like face-to-face -face networking that helps a lot enables a lot so it's really important events like this one every, having taking place so everyone can go there and we know that we're going to meet like-minded people like us where we can share and sharing means we we show our experience and we learn from others their experience it's more easy to to build a network it's more easy to to transfer knowledge between peers when we are on the same space together. That part of being human is parting of being physically in the same space. And then the ideas can flow faster, the experience. And then sometimes you, oh, I have this idea just, oh, you are here next to me. Why not this or that? So the conversations flow more easily. So this would be, this is the way that actually how I maintain my pace and uh, with the new technology is always speaking with my peers around, not only inside of my company, but outside of my company as well. Why would you encourage people to come to DevOps Live, get their free ticket and come to your session um, with your fellow Vodafone uh, colleagues about diversity? Why would you recommend them to come along? Sharing is the most powerful tool that we have in the as humans, because we can share and learn from others. So this is very interactive. These kind of things, usually they become very interactive. So sharing my experience doesn't mean I'm, I'm absolutely right, but that gives us others the option to see the same problem from different perspectives. On the same time, even if I'm going to be a speaker, I'm going to be paying attention to what others have to say about the same problem. And that's the only way as a community, we can grow faster and learn from each other. So this is really important. And I'm looking forward to see you there to discuss about diversity in DevOps.